Every single developer on their journey will encounter working with emails. Today, we're going to take a look at how we can template our own emails and specifically we'll be looking at Fluid, which is a liquid templating engine. Liquid templating can be used for far more various things to template things where emailing is really just the beginning. So. Uh, before we jump into the meat of the tutorial, we're going to scroll all the way down here where we're going to take a look at Fluent Email. So if you ever looked at Razor Engine templating and you couldn't figure it out or you found something and you rolled your own solution, well, there's basically a library that handles all of this. So if you want your Razor Engine templating or you want your Liquid Engine templating, this is basically the library that you can look for, which will basically do it for you and it, it is using this fluid library as well. Otherwise, if you're curious and you want to see how this all fits together in an ASP.NET Core solution, because you're, you know, potentially you might want to build this yourself. Look no further, let's go ahead and get started. We will put stuff in the database, we'll render our own emails, etc. So let's go ahead and get started. We have a fresh application, so minimal APIs, all the new jazz. We are going to go straight into packages. By the way, I am using a PostgreSQL database. And if you know me, I use MartinDB with PostgreSQL. So let's go ahead and download Fluid. We will just go ahead and get Fluid Core. Install that. While that's installing, let's Google for Martin. We'll get Martin and install that as well. Once all of that is done, let's come back to the repository here. And we are going to go for the Hello World example that they have here. Additionally, they talk a little bit about threat safety here where they basically say fluid parser is your singleton. You should be using that as a static field, etc. So we will register it as a singleton and then the rest of it, we are going to resolve it as they do in this sample. So let's go ahead, copy this, come back here. We'll duplicate this map get and we will just name it test. We will replace hello world with this example. Fluid parser, we are going to add this as a service. So builder, services, add singleton, whack the fluid parser in here, implement messing members, and there we have it. So fluid parser, take it into your function parameter and let it be injected from the dependency injection container. Now do note, I'm not going to go into super mega details of uh, rendering complex models. Uh, you can check out what the liquid templating engine is capable of. But in terms of uh, rendering emails, all you have to do is you just, you know, write your own HTML, VS Code, Writer. I don't know if Visual Studio will have an extension. Extensible IDs will have support for liquid. So you should be able to do something like this. Maybe put a little bit of a strong on here, just like that. And I didn't actually need the app because I'm going to be putting this in a browser in just a minute. Let's go ahead, open up the terminal and watch this. And with the application loading, uh, let's duplicate this. We will go to slash test and see an error. So I've uh, made this as text. So we want test. Let's go ahead, refresh. And we should be able to see the template if you are sensible. But currently we're outputting it to the console. What you want to do is you actually want to return it. So let's return it here. If we do this, uh, we can just go ahead and return something like that, right? So this is not supposed to happen. We'll come back to the browser, refresh this, and now we are getting our HTML in the browser, right? The point is not about getting this in the browser. The point is once you put it into your SMTP client and you email it, it's going to be rendered as HTML on whatever email provider is going to receive this. So you're basically just templating in using liquid templating, which is a familiar style of templating. If you're using Angular or Vue.js, you're going to feel right at home. We're now at a point where we have two constant parts baked in. Let's go ahead, take them out. Let's make them dynamic. Let's make sure that we can play around and configure these things. So starting with the source, we're going to start storing that in the database. I have a PostgreSQL database running here. I'm going to create a database. I will call it email just like that. And now I can go ahead and connect to this email database. If you want to know more about PostgreSQL, links are in the description around how to work with it and how to set it up. Okay. So backslash D, no relations, no tables. We don't have anything like that. This is where Martin comes in and we can start working with the database. So builder services add Martin. 
our configuration goes into here. We have to supply a connection. I am going to copy pasta my connection string, which is pointing to the email database. Hopefully I don't need to say this, store it in app settings, encrypted, all that jazz. Because we're connected to the database, uh, we should now be able to go ahead and ad hoc start adding these uh, templates into the database, right? We'll need an iDocument session. This is going to be a database session where we should be able to store some kind of object. Well, we can define a public record. This will just be an email template. This can have a GUID of ID and string template. Nothing too complicated. Take this email template, supply it as a parameter. We're not going to do view model or form model or command. We're just going to do a single model into the session. Just go ahead, store your email. And then if you're using entity framework or anything like that, you'll feel right at home. You're just going to go ahead and save this to the database like that. Make sure that the function is asynchronous. We want to map post and uh, let's say create template. We'll, we'll take this route with us and I am going to just use static files. I'm going to use JavaScript and browser as the console to create these things. So I'm not going to faff about with HTML or anything like that. Uh, let's go ahead and add a directory that was not meant to happen. Let's go ahead and uh, technical difficulties uh, back to it. Uh, directory www root. Well, let's go ahead, place this here and we will add an HTML page. This is going to be index.html. And in here, I will just create a script tag where I'm just going to do most of my stuff. We'll create a function for creating templates. So create template. This will equal to a Lambda function, which can just evaluate to a fetch. The fetch will go to this route and then we're going to have to have some configuration where we say what kind of method is it? It's post. Uh, we want to be posting JSON because that's all we accept. So we want content type. So you have application slash JSON and then you have the body which you JSON stringify and then you have an object. So ID that we have for our email template that is going to be generated automatically by Martin. Otherwise you can have the template. Just put that as the property here should get automatically mapped to the record and stored in the database. Uh, let's go ahead. Let me just double check this or I actually should be looking at this. Uh, it looks okay to me. Uh, this has reloaded. Let's open this up and we are going to go to index.html like that. I'll open up the console, but I haven't mapped my static files. So uh, use static files right over there semicolon and now the www root folder with the index html page should get picked up. We'll come back to the browser, refresh this and everything is good. So let's go ahead and create a template. And here we will supply this template that we have. So we're not going to be too creative, but later on you will see how you will be able to basically just swap them out, etc. I'll just post this and this should work. If I come back around to my database and I list my relations, I'm going to see this table. Well, let's go ahead and select from there. Uh, well, don't actually don't forget the from statement, but there is our template. Having this template in the database now basically means that we can vary what kind of template we want to render. Uh, I will supply an iQuery session from Martin. This is basically to be able to query the database. iDocument session allows you to write. Query session is for query. We will replace a session with a load async. I will be loading an email template. I don't need this template. I will need an ID. So let's supply an ID. This will be a GUID and an additional parameter in our minimal APIs. Taking ID. Placing it over here, making this asynchronous instead of the source. This is going to be the email template. And from the email template, we grab the template, which is the source. Now this could be null. I can place a null check here. I'm not going to, I will go back to the database. I will grab the identifier without the space in the beginning. Uh, let's come back to the browser, to the test slash and place the identifier over here. 
At this point, not much has changed. The first load was a little bit slow because Martin is doing work in the background. If we want to vary the template, we just have to go post a new template and we have to supply a different GUID. And then it comes a question of, well, what object do you want to render in this template and what possible objects can you possibly render? So let's say that we can potentially have the same object, but we want to render it multiple times. And that's the kind of situation that you can be in. You can have many customers, many products you want to say for this customer and this product combination. I want to use this template and then there is some kind of additional configuration in the database that you can basically configure that will get surfaced as a service in your application and will basically generate a correct email for the correct customer. So let's go a little bit wild with the entities. Okay, so we will have something like a generic thing. Again, this is going to be a good and we're just going to have a string string bag right so just a bag of properties create another map post we're going to create a generic we are going to we're going to take this generic entity and store it in the database we'll come back to index html we will copy this create generic we'll just ask for bag and place bag over here we'll create generic generic there we go writers helping me and this should be able to put some additional entities in the database that will vary by some kind of parameters, okay? So coming back to my console, let's refresh this and we are going to ask for create generic. For the bag option, I'm going to vary by the type. What kind of generic entity is this? This will be a product. Uh, the product can have a name, so this is a t-shirt. And then we can create another generic, which will be, let's say, it's a service that we provide and we are a cloud provider, right? So this can have a title, but maybe something else. And not that important. This is just another generic entity that we want to store in the database. We come back around to Martin, uh, list relations, and we should have this generic table here. So if we select from there, Look what we have there and we have a couple of these generic entities. Cool. Now what we want to do is say either render us a generic entity or taking it a step further is saying create configuration which is going to map an entity or a type of entity to a email template. Okay. So again, we'll go a little bit further. Email config this will have an id and we are mapping and this will again this will largely depend on your business goals or what you want to do here uh, maybe a specific product will have just its own email that renders it maybe it will have a segment which you then compose together there are many various things that you can do here but this is just an example of a not so basic setup so type and then we match it on a template Okay, so there will be a good, and this is a template ID. Let's create another post. I promise this will be the last post, or maybe not uh, the last one, we'll have one more. So uh, email config, we will have our config over here. We are just going to store it and we're going to create config. We'll come back around here. Let's grab this. We're going to create config, create config. Instead of a bag, we are going to post type and I can't remember what the last property was, template ID. So, yep, uh, that's what we want, template ID. And I think uh, better if we'll, these will just be positional parameters, which will then fold into an object. So this will just make it a little bit easier for me. Targets config, create config, perfect. And there we go. Let's come back around to the browser. We are going to refresh and we're going to create config. Uh, we don't need to supply the identifier again, that will be created automatically, but uh, for our product, we wanna go ahead and specify a template. I will grab uh, something we already have. Let me come back around here and I'll just grab this template. Okay, HTML. We're gonna say that this is a product and we'll keep the strong, we'll remove a last name I'll just put name here 
and I'm realizing I'm meant to be creating a template for this. So let's go ahead and just uh, make sure that this fails. We want to create a template. Uh, let's create two templates, one that we're going to use for a product and one that we're going to use for a service. Okay, and it's pretty much the same thing, but hopefully it will make sense that you can either switch them based on a type, based on some kind of other property, depending on how your configuration element is set up or based on an identifier. We now want to create config and let's just double check that these are in the database. Uh, there they are and we will have the identifiers for them. So type for product, please point to the product identifier. So let's grab this over here and place this not there, but here. And then we'll create another config. And for service, we are going to use the same email over here and put the GUI here. Okay. Uh, coming back around here again, relations, we have our additional relation here. So let's go ahead and select all from here just to double check what we have in the database. And we have our mappings or our configuration, what type to what template should the email map to. Okay. Now for the test, we're testing a product ID or a generic ID. So gen ID, I'm pointing out that this is just meant for the generic entity. I'll use Martin to load my generic entity and use a generic ID. So this is just going to be something. Uh, this is a synchronous call. Let's go ahead and make this async. Uh, remove these braces and make sure we're using a wait over here. Then from session, we will load a sync or actually because we don't have an ID, we are querying. And this is where for our config that I call a config email config, we can start filtering and basically saying where the type equals equals to generated bag and we can grab the type parameter from here and specifically this can be first default or a sync i don't need all this craziness let's get rid of that this is going to get me my config place it over here and i know this may be looking a little weird or is going to look a little bit weird but we're also going to include template ID and this is going to select us a template, right? So email template, uh, we are going to put this into a parameter over here. Template from the beginning, it's going to be null. However, include is going to assign it over here. So T template will equal T. This is how you include a related entities. And this template over here, we will do something about it in just a second, but the model no longer exists. Email template, this no longer exists. And let's actually grab the name so we don't have to replace that much here. We'll get rid of all of this. Gen, we will be using the bag. And the configuration, the mapper, we are not actually that interested. Let's go ahead and clean that up. We are going to come back around here and we are going to look at our generics. We will take our uh, uh, t-shirt first. Uh, let me double check that the type casing is correct. It should be. Let's come back around to the browser. We will go to test and we'll test it based on the product. And there we have it. So product is a t-shirt. Coming back around, let's test the service. Place it over here like that. And we are using a different email template. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can use your models and then you can have uh, many different emails that you're configuring as your application uh, is running. And then you may also have additional configuration which you can basically, while your application is still running, say for this product, I want this email, for this product, I want that email. And as this configuration can get a little bit more complicated, you can say things like if I have this product, that customer, this discount or whatever, generate these additional things on my email and send that. This will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. All the links are in the description. Make sure that you give a start to these repositories, MartinDB, Fluid, and I think it was Fluent email. Yep, Fluent email. Creators of such repositories really appreciate it.
Otherwise, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comment section. If you want the source code, you will have to support me on Patreon. Speaking of which, big thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. I really appreciate it. You helped me make these videos. Thank you very much for watching and good day.